Gu Tian, who was proficient in all kinds of martial arts in class 18, died in the experimental explosion. After opening her eyes again, she became the eighth child of the Gu family. The family is friendly, brother, friend, brother and brother are respectful, and sisters are harmonious. Although there are many children in the family, they still adore her. Just looking at this family with nothing to do, the nephew couldn't even afford to attend a private school. Three-year-old Gu Tian secretly swore to take the whole family to get rich. Born with abundant fortune, she claims to be the daughter of the Heavenly Way. Just born, a hundred flowers bloom. If you want to eat meat, a mountain full of wild animals will be delivered to your door. Go up the mountain and pick up a hundred-year-old carrot. Go up the mountain again, I'm sorry this mountain belongs to me. Fingering casually, whether it's gold or silver, is it all gone? The days of counting money are too carefree, almost leaving the house empty by thieves turning around, it turned out to be an acquaintance committing the crime my person. Okay. Is it my money? No way. Keywords of the novel. Farmer's Troop Pet Girl No Pop-Ups, Farmer's Troop Pet Girl TXT Complete Collection Download, Farmer's Troop Pet Girl Latest Chapter Reading. Chapter 1. Old Clam Beads. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 1 Old Clam Beads The Great Wonder of Shirtu Village. Old clams are giving birth to pearls. This old clam is referring to a family in Shirtu Village, surnamed Gu. Mr. Gu is about 50 years old, and Mrs. Gu is also 50 years old. She should have been enjoying her grandchildren for a long time, but her belly doesn't stop. Madame Zun is pregnant again. Unfortunately, Gu's family is lush with branches and leaves, and there are no shortage of children and daughters. He even expressed with a listless expression that there are too many children in the family, which is annoying and tight. However, it made a group of childless daughter. In. Law's eyes turn red with anger. The old men and women in the village gathered under the old locust tree, each stretching their necks to gaze at the old Gu family in the west of the village. Old Slick, do you think this old man Gu's mother. In. Law really has it? The old slippery guy doesn't know how to take this, after all, this isn't his mother. In. Law. Didn't he just put his head up here and take a look? Although I heard from his hoozy that he saw Dr. Lee hurriedly carrying his small medicine basket to Gu's house, I haven't seen any movement in the past half day. He shook his head and said, who knows. Old Gu didn't say anything about it, so we can't talk nonsense about it. Let me tell you something, Mrs. Gu is too busy at home. She is ill at leisure, so she thinks she is pregnant. A woman who doesn't deal with Mrs. Gu said confidently with a pout. Mrs. Fong, I see you're just looking at how comfortable Mrs. Gu is, her eyes are red. Who said it's not right? Who wouldn't know about this matter where Mrs. Fong and Mrs. Gu are not dealing with each other? Fong Posey looked one of the best when she was young. When Gu Laozi settled down in Shirtu village, he was still a lonely family. It was only through someone's introduction that he met Gu Laozi today. However, Fong Posey had long been interested in Gu Laozi because he was from outside and at that time, Gu Laozi was poor, so he took a break from his thoughts. After the old man Ku Gu got married, the day became increasingly prosperous. At that time, her heart was filled with regret, and her head was hot, so she found a young man from the same village to marry. Over the years, the other party has become increasingly wealthy. Their family has become increasingly poor, and they really don't know which immortal they have offended. She is eager to see her family become even poorer. Make an effort. Fong Leolaezi snorted coldly, and Douyin kept staring at the entrance of Gu's house. From a distance, she saw the door open from inside and two people running away. One was wearing a blue long shirt, with a bamboo woven medicine basket hanging on his shoulder, and the other was wearing a white gray short shirt. Although he was old, he was still handsome. With a pout, everyone in this Gu family is actually good-skinned. Coming out, coming out. When everyone saw Mr. Gu personally escorting barefoot doctor out of the door, 
the two exchanged a few pleasantries before barefoot doctor left. Mr. Gu, who remained in place, looked neither happy nor sad, making it difficult to understand for a while. Is this really there or not? I saw Mr. Gu walking towards the direction of the old locust tree, and everyone took a step back. As soon as they stood up, they saw that Mr. Gu had already approached. Oh, everyone is here. Yes, yes, everyone is watching your jokes. Everyone had smiles on their faces, but no one spoke. They were worried that if they said the wrong thing, they would be beaten up by Mr. Gu, after all, he was really beating them up. Mr. Gu reached out to touch his beard and suddenly laughed, causing everyone to almost stumble and fall, fearing that Mr. Gu would suddenly go crazy. Everyone, my wife is happy. It's not long before we get busy with farming. My old lady is happy and quiet. Please be careful when everyone passes by my house, be careful. Without waiting for everyone to react, he lifted his foot and walked back. Everyone stood there dumbfounded. They were all here to see your family joke, not to be threatened by you. Who knows that your doorstep is a must-pass place. Wait. Is Mrs. Gu happy? Did the old clam produce pearls? This is a strange news. The pregnancy of Mrs. Gu, who was born in a clam, swept across the entire stone village. From the age of eighty to two or three years old, everyone knew that Mrs. Gu was happy. Some say congratulations, while others are not optimistic, and opinions are divided for a while. Gu Jia. Mr. Gu also called his married daughter back, and the whole family sat in the main room, with a somewhat solemn atmosphere. Mr. Gu patted the table. Quiet. The already silent hall is even quieter. Mrs. Gu patted Mr. Gu's sleeve and asked him to talk things over. Don't make such a fuss. What if it scares her girl? She touched her smooth belly and had already imagined that it was a girl inside. Mr. Gu sneered and reached out to touch Mrs. Gu's smooth belly. When he turned to look at everyone, his face wore a serious expression. You must know that your mother is pregnant now, and she will do things lightly in the future. Your mother is still in charge of money in the family. The eldest wife and the second wife will fuck with dim sum. You can do things in the family and ask your mother for money. Mr. Gu looked at his only married daughter and said, Although you are a married girl, Ing, you shouldn't have been meddling in your mother's family affairs. But isn't there a special situation with your mother? You can tell your son dot in dot law later that it's time for the busy farming season and go home a few more times to accompany your mother. After the busy farming season, you don't need to come too much. If it weren't for the busy farming season, he wouldn't have asked his daughter to accompany his wife. Guing nodded and said, Dad, I know. Her husband's family is also very populous, and she doesn't need her every year during the busy farming season, so she can come back to accompany her mother. Mr. Gu nodded in satisfaction and solemnly warned several mischievous grandsons before the scene ended. During the months when Mrs. Gu raised her baby, the Gu family was trembling and made a slight mistake. Mr. Gu, with a dark face, appeared silently behind her, making her scalp tingle. Fortunately, in the blink of an eye, it was the day when Mrs. Gu gave birth. Winter is cold and wandering, spring is strong. A group of idle old men and women in Shirtu village once again gathered under the old locust tree in the village, all stretching their necks to look at the old Gu's house in the west of the village. When they saw the old Gu's head inviting Grandma Wen into their house, they were excited for a moment. I saw Lu Wenpa enter the house. I've seen it too. Hey, do you think Mrs. Gu is pregnant with a boy or a girl? There is no shortage of boys and girls in the old Gu family. It doesn't matter whether it's a man or a woman, right? This is different. A few days ago, I saw Mrs. Gu walking around. She has a big belly. It's like giving birth to a child back then. I suspect she's pregnant with a boy. It's a girl. Old Gu calls girl girl every day, this must be a girl. 
You old men, at first glance, look like boys. How could it be girls? Make a bet. I'll bet an egg. This is the girl. Bet, bet. The old men and women under the old locust tree started arguing and went to register their bets in front of the old slippery man. The registered old slippery man silently took out ten one and placed it on the side where the daughter was born. Under the old locust tree, a bet was made, and the Gu family was waiting for Mrs. Gu to give birth to the child. The Gu family were all gathered around the courtyard, their eyes fixed on the old lady's door. As she walked in for a moment, she didn't hear any sound, which made her heart tense. The eldest daughter dot in dot law's name is Qin Shui, who was married from the town. She is hardworking and quick-witted. When she heard Mrs. Gu start, she quickly boiled a pot of hot water and waited, and even made a bowl of brown sugar eggs for her. New book for collection recommended tickets thank you all lovely hosts, end of this chapter. Chapter 2 Blooming Flowers You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Blooming Flowers But after waiting for a long time without hearing the heart-wrenching cries, everyone became a bit anxious. What's going on here? The Lu Wenpa inside the house is also so anxious that her forehead is sweating. How could a pregnant woman give birth without crying? Pooh. Not right. There's no one who doesn't feel pain giving birth. Lu Wenpa looked at Mrs. Gu lying in bed with a relaxed expression, without any sense of nervousness about having a child. Gu Jia, do you feel any pain? Aunt Lu, I don't hurt at all. If it weren't for the feeling of her stomach sagging, she wouldn't feel like giving birth at all. Lu Wenpa nodded and said, you have a good baby. The child is not noisy. A few days ago, when I went to Lijiago, the daughter dot in dot law gave birth and the child was very noisy. Lu Wenpa was chatting with Mrs. Gu to ease the atmosphere, when suddenly Mrs. Gu exclaimed in surprise that her child had been born. Lu Wenpa skillfully cut the umbilical cord. The newborn baby had fair skin and did not have the usual wrinkled appearance at birth. At first glance, it looked good. Quickly wrapped the child with a blanket and placed it by Mrs. Gu's side before continuing to handle the remaining matters. Mrs. Gu was full of energy and turned to look at the little baby lying next to her, with a gentle smile in her eyes. Among the few children she gave birth to, this one is the most beautiful. Aunt Lu, is the child a boy or a girl? Mrs. Gu turned her head and asked the busy Lu Wenpa. Lu Wenpa finished wiping her hands and walked over to Mrs. Gu. She opened the small quilt and looked at it, with a smile on her face that didn't diminish. Congratulations to the Gu family, you have fulfilled your wish. It's a daughter. Mrs. Gu touched her daughter's small cheek, and the little baby happily kicked her legs. A strange fragrance hit her, and Mrs. Gu looked surprised. The fragrance was slightly faint, and she was the only one who could smell it. The people outside were anxiously waiting. When they heard Mrs. Gu exclaim, they thought it had started, but after waiting for a long time, they didn't hear anything else. They were so anxious that Mr. Gu almost broke into the door. Congratulations, it's a daughter. Lu Wenpa opened the door and congratulated Mr. Gu. At the same time, a hundred flowers bloomed on the mountain, and the animals walking in the mountains looked up towards Shirtu village. Under the old locust tree. Why hasn't there been any movement in Mr. Gu's house for a long time? Isn't it difficult to give birth? Speak up. Be careful of Lao Gu hitting you. What's the smell? Why is it so fragrant? Hey! Old Slick, the peach blossoms at your doorstep have bloomed. Everyone was surprised. There were many flower buds growing on this peach tree, and according to the flowering period, it would take at least ten days to bloom. Why did this happen so early for no reason? This side is still in surprise, but on the other side, there is good news from the old Gu family that Mrs. Gu has given birth. It's a daughter. The crowd didn't pay much attention to what flowers were blooming. They all gathered around the door of Lao Gu's house and looked inside. 
They saw that Lu Wenpa came out and quickly asked, Lu Wenpa, what is this from Lao Gu's family? I gave birth to a daughter. It's been decades since I gave birth, and I've never seen such a beautiful baby before. It's really beautiful. Lu Wenpa smashed her mouth and let out a sigh in her heart. Why can't she afford such a beautiful girl? Shaking his head, he walked away from everyone's eyes. As soon as the slippery old man heard that he had given birth to a daughter, he immediately slapped his thigh. Finally got it right. The Gu family rushed into Mrs. Gu's room in unison. As soon as they entered, they saw a quiet little baby lying in a small blanket, with fair skin like jade, a pair of big eyes shining brightly, blinking like a large grape hidden in the dark, shining brightly. Everyone gathered around the child, unable to resist smacking their tongues. This child is so beautiful. Ordinary children are born with wrinkles, but when their own little sister is born, why is it so beautiful? The Gu family members looked at each other and decisively felt that their own genes were better. Mr. Gu looked at his daughter lying in the small blanket and couldn't help but giggle foolishly. It was only after being slapped by Mrs. Gu that he restrained a bit. Mr. Gu coughed lightly and waved his hand at everyone, saying, All right, all right, you guys have seen each other before. Today is our first time meeting, so we should bring something to visit. However, on your first day here, these formalities will be waived. But next time we come, please remember to bring something. Upon hearing these words, Mrs. Gu couldn't help but feel a headache. When her old man said something nonsense, she immediately agreed, your father is right. The old couple didn't take a breath and didn't blush as they earned something for their little daughter. They didn't feel embarrassed about it, but instead felt that this was the right thing to do. Boss Gu Xufeng is on duty at the Yaman and knows that his mother is going to give birth in the next few days. He took a leave early and came back. When he heard his parents say this, he also felt that he didn't bring anything to see his younger sister, which was really disappointing. However, he took out his body and didn't have any money. What should he do? The eldest daughter dot in dot law knew what she was looking for at the appearance of her own man. She immediately took out a red cloth from her body and stuffed it into the man's hand. She saw an extra red cloth in the man's broad palm, and when she slightly clenched it, she felt like there was a pair of bracelets inside. She immediately reached out and handed it to her parents. Dad, Mom. I am the eldest in the family, and since my younger sister was born, I should give her a welcome gift. This is a bracelet for her to wear. Mr. Gu reached out and took the red cloth handed over by his eldest son. Upon opening it, he saw a pair of silver bracelets, each with a string of small bells hanging on it. With a slight shake, the bracelets jingled loudly. As soon as the big brother took out the gift, everyone also took out the gifts they had prepared. Boss Gu Xufeng blushed a bit. It turned out that everyone had prepared gifts early in the morning, but he had forgotten about it himself. Fortunately, his wife had a heart. The baby in swaddling clothes struggled to open its eyes, but because it was too small, its eyes only opened a slit, carefully observing everyone through the dim light. They are honest and honest in appearance, and harmonious in atmosphere. Mmm. She is very satisfied. Although she doesn't know how she got here, it's not bad to take a look now. Mother, have you named your little sister? Qin Shui, the eldest daughter dot in dot law, looked at the little sister in her swaddling clothes and liked her more and more. Mrs. Gu furrowed her brows and was overjoyed. She hadn't named her youngest daughter yet. She immediately turned her head to look at the old man in the north who couldn't find him. She shook her head and said, not yet. Upon hearing these words, Mr. Gu hurriedly said, Wife, please give your daughter a name. Mrs. Gu lowered her head to tease the baby girl, with a smile in her eyes and a slight touch on her cheek. The little girl burst into laughter. Whenever I touch you, I'll laugh. If you're still laughing so sweetly, why don't I call you Gu Tian? I reached out and touched my little nose, then continued, 
I hope you have a sweet life like honey, peace and happiness, and worry-free life. I will do my best to make you worry-free for a lifetime. Gu Tian The little baby in swaddling clothes, upon hearing the name, happily straightened its feet, but accidentally kicked it onto the face of her biological father who looked down to see if she had peed. Mr. Gu expressed his happiness. His daughter really likes him, look. You even kicked him. End of this chapter. Chapter 3 Automatic Door Access You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 Automatic Door Access The newborn baby fell asleep after playing for a while, and Mr. Gu kicked him out. I chuckled at my little girl for half an hour before being kicked out by Mrs. Gu. Mrs. Gu was really afraid that her old man would go crazy if he continued to laugh like this. Mrs. Gu had just finished giving birth and felt a bit weak after giving birth. Her two daughter dot in dot law went to the kitchen to work hard. Gu Ying was an extramarital daughter, and now that she has seen Mrs. Gu give birth, she hurried home and told her family. Mr. Gu has seven children, which can be considered as eight newborns. The eldest Gu Xufeng has a job in the Yaman. Two years ago, the second Gu Buizhou went out to do business without being obstructed by his family, and there has been no news of him. The third is Gu Ying, who married out to the neighboring village. His husband's family name is Cheng, and he is also a harmonious family. Lao Si Gu Yunqi and Lao Qi Gu Yanheng are scholars who study in a private school in the town. Lao Wu Gu Jing learns embroidery from others in the town. Lao Lu Gu Yan, due to her young age, stays at home to watch over her nieces and nephews. After being kicked out by his wife, Mr. Gu walked towards the old locust tree with two eggs in his palm and one hand behind his back, his waist straight and his toes high and proud. Under the old locust tree sat a group of chattering old men, and from a distance, they could see the old bones walking out like a fighting rooster. Hey! Lao Gu, why don't you stay at home and watch the child stroll around? Lao Gu, congratulations! Congratulations! In less than a morning, the whole stone village learned about the fact that Mr. Gu had given birth to a daughter. Among them, the old slippery guy is the happiest because he made the right bet and even earned a chicken. Gu Lao Lao Shen waved his hand in front of him and said, My daughter is too easy to handle. She doesn't make any noise or fuss. Sigh. It's better for her. Families with daughters frown upon hearing this, while those without daughters have their eyes lit up. When Lao Gu Tu was brainwashing everyone about how good his daughter was under the old locust tree, he was interrupted by the old slippery man beside him. He stared at Lao Gu Tu's door with disbelief, and quickly patted the chattering Lao Gu Tu. Stop boasting. Look at your house, old bone. After hearing the slippery voice of the old man, everyone was taken aback and looked at the old Gu family together. The originally open door swayed and a few wild chickens walked in, followed by a little rabbit bouncing around with its head and brain. In just a short while, several wild animals have already entered the house. This. What is the situation? The prey that is automatically delivered to the door. Lao Gu furrowed his brow, and behind him came the sound of a knowledgeable person. He didn't want to chat with the big guy anymore, so he hurriedly walked towards home. When everyone saw this situation, they all raised their feet and followed, after all, this spectacle was also their first time seeing it. The entrance of Lao Gu's house was crowded with onlookers, all of whom were looking into the yard with their feet raised, startled at first glance. In just a short while, there were already over a dozen prey in the yard, including wild chickens, rabbits, and even slightly larger roe deer. What situation is this? What are you all doing in a daze? Hurry up! Old Gu shouted loudly, and everyone regained their senses and followed suit to catch wild animals. The big guy worked hard for half an hour before he finally caught all these things. Old Gu had a wild chicken feather on his head, and after commanding everyone to put away his prey, he told the big guy that his child would come to drink at full moon. Everyone responded and walked away with sour water in their hearts. 
Everything that happened outside the house, the sleeping baby didn't hear at all, because she kept talking about eating meat in her dreams, eating a lot of meat. Suck and slide. After hearing the commotion inside, Mrs. Gu peeked at the crack in the door, but was driven to bed by her second wife and continued to lie down. The old lady muttered a few words, she is in such good health that she doesn't need to take a postpartum confinement. At this moment, old Gu walked into the house with a chicken feather on his head. When he saw Mrs. Gu getting out of bed, his face changed and he quickly stepped forward to help her. Why did you get out of bed? Go and lie down. Do you all think I'm so delicate? At least I've had several too. Mr. Gu wanted to say something more, but when he reached his mouth, he paused. He turned his head to look at his second daughter. In law standing next to him, waved his hand, and said, From the second family, go see what they're doing. Call everyone back. Upon hearing this, the second daughter. In law also knew that her father. In law had something to tell her in laws, so she wisely withdrew. Mrs. Gu was half lying in bed, while Mr. Gu was tucked in the corner. Old man, just say what you want. She saw that her old man had something on his mind. Ah, I was thinking these years have been tough for you. If it weren't for my stubbornness, you wouldn't have worked so hard. Mr. Gu lowered his eyes, concealing a hint of sadness in his eyes. If it weren't for what happened back then, he wouldn't have gone into seclusion in the mountains and forests. With you and children, these hardships are nothing. Mrs. Gu lowered her head and looked at her little daughter lying beside her, looking at her sleeping little figure, sweeping away her tired mindset. Sleeping daughter Gu Tian, while taking a nap, perks up her ears to listen to her parents' gossip. Mrs. Gu patted Mr. Gu and felt that he was really uncomfortable. I'm thinking we'll all be gone in the future. What should our little girl do? Old Gu frowned, obviously he had not considered this issue either. What should we do? What else can we do? Of course, from now on, we will earnestly teach them how to love their younger sister and show filial piety to their aunt. After making up his mind, Mr. Gu and Mrs. Gu chatted a few more times, and coincidentally, the second daughter. In. Law came back with the eldest family and a group of children. The eldest daughter. In. Law had just prepared dinner and the dishes were on the table. With a wave of his hand, Mr. Gu let several people sit down. At the dinner table, Mr. Gu moved his chopsticks before starting to eat. When he was about to eat, he put down his chopsticks and then spoke. I believe you all know what happened this afternoon, right? Mr. Gu did not explicitly mention it, but hinted at the wild chickens and rabbits who entered the house this afternoon. Boss Gu Xufeng actually knew about this matter. He was supposed to catch a wild chicken today to help his mother and sister repair their bodies, but as soon as he reached the foot of the mountain, he was stopped by a group of villagers. Everyone was talking nonsense, and it was only then that he understood this matter. Who could believe that the wild animals on the mountain would come to their house on their own? It wasn't until they met their second brother and sister on the way that they realized this was true. Dad, I've heard about this too, but how can these wild animals come to our house well? This is really rare. It's the first time a prey has voluntarily brought them to our house to beg for food. The old man waved his hand and said, no matter how it came, since it has arrived at our house, these prey will be used to entertain your sister and your sister. In. Law's full moon banquet, right? After Mr. Gu finished speaking, he deliberately put on a hesitant expression. Seeing his father's reaction, Mr. Gu Xufeng immediately frowned and said, Dad. Don't worry, as long as I have something to eat, I will definitely not starve my little sister. These wild animals have never had such a phenomenon before, but they have appeared today. End of this chapter. Chapter 4 Remembering the Goodness of Auntie You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 Remembering the Goodness of Auntie Mr. Gu also had doubts in his heart. He knew what his family's fortune was, but he had never had such good luck before. At most, he was as ordinary as an ordinary family, not very wealthy but not very poor. Just as he was thinking about it, 
he shifted his gaze to the little girl lying on the con. His heart was startled, and his hands couldn't help but tremble, almost dropping the bowl in his hand. Dad, is it cold for me to lie on the con? The eldest daughter dot in dot law kept watching her father dot in dot law staring at her sister dot in dot law on the con, wondering if she was afraid her sister dot in dot law might be cold. Immediately ask. Mr. Gu regained his senses and was no longer in the mood to eat. He turned his head to look at his grandchildren who were eating. You guys, being able to eat this bite of meat today is all thanks to your aunt's good fortune. If you have a bite in the future, you should also give it to your aunt in half. Remember to show filial piety to your aunt. Do you hear me? The children of the Gu family have proper eating habits. After hearing Mr. Gu's words, they all put down their chopsticks and bowls and raised their necks to listen to Grandpa's speech. Got it, Grandpa. We will definitely show filial piety to our little aunt. Several older children spoke up in unison, and the younger ones followed suit. Mr. Gu nodded somewhat satisfied and continued to let his grandchildren eat. The eldest Gu Xufeng didn't understand his father's actions, but he also agreed to let the children show filial piety to their aunt. Dad. Don't worry. The first and second students will all take good care of their younger sister. Not just them. When you turn around, tell your sister and those stinky kids at school to love and take care of them. Mr. Gu felt a little uneasy and turned to ask, when will those stinky kids rest? Stinky guy Gu Xufeng touched his nose and said carefully, tomorrow is Shumu. Then go pick them up tomorrow. Mr. Gu's tone was somewhat indifferent, but Gu Xufeng understood the meaning of the words. I quickly responded. After dinner, Mr. Gu entered the room and saw Mrs. Gu lying in bed, along with the girl beside him. Did your daughter wake up? Did she disturb you? During dinner, her daughter kept sleeping and didn't cry or make any noise. Mrs. Gu shook her head. The child was too well behaved and also very reassuring. After hearing these words, Gu Tian, who had been waking up leisurely, frowned. She was a good baby and never bothered her mother. She snorted a few times to express her dissatisfaction. Upon hearing her younger daughter's moans, Mrs. Gu immediately laughed and said, You have been despised by your daughter. Upon hearing these words, Mr. Gu immediately said he would stop. How could he be despised by his daughter? He frolicked with his daughter again until Gu Tian fell asleep and finally let go. The next day, before dawn, Gu Xufeng hurriedly left his house, and there was a parked ox cart at the village entrance. Gu Xufeng walked up to the ox cart and took out five wen coins from his body, handing them to Mr. Huang beside the cart. Mr. Huang is the only person in the village who drives the ox cart. Gu family kid, everyone is from the village, just give me a penny. Grandpa Huang saw that Gu family kid had given so much money, and immediately wanted to refund it to Gu Xufeng, but to his surprise, he was pushed back by the other party. Grandpa Huang, keep this money. The academy is closed today, and I'm going to pick up my younger brother and sister to go home. Mr. Huang knew about the situation of the Gu family and also knew that they had two sons studying in the academy. He nodded and collected the money. At a slight dawn, a cart drove into the county town and stopped at a street intersection. After greeting Mr. Huang and agreeing on a time, Gu Xufeng went to the academy to wait for the end of school. In about fifteen minutes, the gate of the academy slowly opened, and the students inside walked out in pairs. Led by two young men, one is slightly younger but both have excellent looks and are incredibly handsome. Carrying a cloth bag on his back, Walking with a gentle breeze, he ran straight towards a familiar figure. Big brother. Gu Xufeng reached out and patted Gu Yunqi's shoulder, looking at the two younger brothers in front of him, and then remembered his father's warning before leaving. We have added a younger sister to our family. I wonder if the two of you have brought any gifts for her. Although the etiquette is light and the affection is heavy, they are both my own siblings, so the emphasis on etiquette is still better. Gu Xufeng recounted his father's advice expressionlessly, 
although he also found it very reasonable. Gu Yunqi ranks fourth, and Gu Yanheng ranks seventh. The two brothers looked at each other, how could they not know that their elderly mother was pregnant? Big brother. Is that why the two of us haven't been able to go home for the past ten months? Yes, they haven't been home for ten months now. They usually spend their rest time in private schools. This time, the two of them can't help but want to go home and have a look Gu Xufeng awkwardly helped his forehead, but he completely forgot about it. When Mrs. Gu was just pregnant, the old man instructed old Si and old Chi Xiao to come back, fearing to startle Mrs. Gu. But Gu Xufeng was afraid that his two younger brothers would be distracted by their studies, and coupled with the fact that the fourth brother was about to take an exam, he didn't tell them about this. Gu Xufeng looked stern and said, it's all dad's decision. All right, it's not too late for you to know now. It's just a good time for us to go ahead and take a look. You two can also buy something for the little girl, and I'll go pick up old five. Boss Gu Xufeng evaded the situation and dragged his two younger brothers to the market. After leaving them at the market, he himself left. Gu Xufeng turned around and went to an embroidery village called Jinxiu Embroidery Village, where old Wu Gu Jing learned embroidery skills. Jinxiu Xiuzhuang Gu Xufeng walked in with ease and familiarity, pushed open the heavy door, and inside was filled with women studying arts. He walked up to the steward and after a few words, he took a few days off for Gu Jing. Gu Qingyan is fifteen years old and full of beauty. She has a pair of curved willow eyebrows, clear eyes like clear springs, and a smile on her face. With a slight smile, she looks like a flower in the spring breeze. Big brother. But did my mother give birth? Gu Xufeng nodded. Gu Jing quickly turned around to pick up the package she had prepared early in the morning, which was bulging and difficult to hold in her hand. Gu Xufeng, who was standing beside him, quickly reached out and picked up the package, which was heavy and heavy. Big brother, has my mother given birth to a younger brother or a younger sister? His eyes were fixed on Gu Xufeng with a clear spring-like expression, filled with a strong desire for knowledge. It's my younger sister. And she's also a beautiful little girl. Let me tell you. Gu Xufeng kept talking all the way, but Gu Jing beside him was stunned. Little sister is really lucky. He kept talking non-stop all the way, until he received his two younger brothers, and Gu Xufeng changed back to his silent appearance. Before leaving, Gu Xufeng went to the Yaman to take a few more days off, and then took his younger brother and sister to take a ox cart home. After returning home, the fourth Gu Yunqi and the seventh Gu Yanheng were blocked outside by Mr. Gu. End of this chapter. Chapter 5 Full Moon Wine You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Full Moon Wine Mr. Gu looked at the set of four study treasures held by the fourth person Gu Yunqi, and then at the grass-woven worm held by the seventh person Gu Yanheng. He reached out and pointed to these things. Is this the meeting gift you two brought to your little sister? Old Si Gu Yunqi has a gentle temperament. He looked down at the set of study treasures in his hand. Although they were not very exquisite, they were still worth a lot of money. How could he be despised when he arrived at his father's place? He didn't understand a bit, but he quietly pushed the book hidden in his arms back, afraid his father would see it. Dad, Although this set of study treasures may not be very exquisite, I will also be able to read and write in the future, and I will be able to use them. If I don't want it, then I can only use it. Mr. Gu nodded and said that his little daughter would also be able to read and write in the future. He turned his head to look at Gu Yanheng standing on the side with his head drooping. And you. Gu Yanheng trembled all over and carefully glanced at the stick that his father had pulled out from somewhere as thick as the mouth of a bowl. Dad. Don't underestimate this grass weaving, this. This. This can't be made up anymore. Gu Yanheng stuffed the straw into Mr. Gu's arms, lifted his hem, and turned around to run. Mr. Gu couldn't resist Lao Qi's move and quickly chased after Gu Yanheng with a thick bowl-mouthed stick. 
The eldest Gu Xufen frowned and walked up to the fourth Gu Yunqi. He reached out and took out a book collection. A brand new grey book cover, written in small hairpin font with female virtues. Gu Xufeng's face turned pale, and he glared at the fourth brother Gu Yunqi, throwing the female virtue in his hand into Gu Yunqi's arms. Fourth, I'm afraid this isn't the gift you're going to give to your little sister, is it? Gu Yunqi's face turned red in a flash, and after a while, he couldn't say a word. Everything that happened outside did not affect Gu Tian. At this moment, she stared at her calves and was trying hard to kick the blanket. Before she could kick the blanket down, she was caught by Mrs. Gu, who turned her head to look at her. Oh my little treasure, how powerful! Mrs. Gu helped Gu Tian tie up the small blanket again and kissed her cheek. The baby's milk fragrance became even more pleasant. Ignoring everything that happened outside the house at all. In the blink of an eye, it arrived that Mrs. Gu had given birth, and the next day was Gu Tian's full moon wine. Early in the morning, Mr. Gu went out for a walk, and in no time, the whole village knew that the Gu family's daughter was about to reach her full moon. Everyone promised that the full moon wine would arrive. Mr. Gu returned home satisfied. Mrs. Gu hugged Gu Tian and came out to bask in the sun. As she watched the proud Mr. Gu return, she asked, Have you ever sent a post to the Lu family in Hashi? The Hashi Lu family is Mrs. Gu's maternal home, named Lu Yue, and there are still elderly parents in the family. I went to deliver it half a month ago, and I replied a few days ago saying that I will definitely come. Mr. Gu took over his little daughter and casually replied. Mrs. Gu nodded and suddenly looked at Mr. Gu again, saying, What about the Gu family? But as soon as she spoke, she paused again. Mr. Gu also froze in his movements, shook his head for a moment, and said, Don't worry about them. Gu Tian, who was in her arms, opened her eyes, which were covered by the corners of the small quilt. However, she heard the sound of her parents pausing in her ear, and her eyes rolled around. It seems that there are still many doubts about my own father. I yawned, feeling drowsy, and fell asleep again. Being a baby is troublesome, how can there be so much sleep? In the evening, the boss Gu Xufeng brought back the fourth and seventh of Shumu, as well as Gu Qing. Last time, Gu Jing brought back a pile of cotton jackets and a small silk quilt for babies, all of which were the wages she had saved up during her apprenticeship. Old Four and Old Seven, who had just returned home, rushed into Mrs. Gu's room, vying to hold their little sister. However, before they could win, they were intercepted by Old Five Gu Jing behind them. Mrs. Gu sat on the side watching her two sons fighting, and then looked at the obedient Gu Tian, feeling even more that it was still her daughter who was fragrant. All right. Do you two still have an older brother like that? Fourth, you're going to end up this year, and you're so childish like your younger brother. She sighed helplessly and shook her head. The brothers have a good relationship, and she usually doesn't say anything. It's just Mr. Gu who comes forward to teach them a lesson. Gu Yunqi's face turned red. He, who had always been gentle, didn't deserve to make such a move. He immediately bowed to Gu Yanheng and said to Lao Qi, Lao Qi belongs to fourth brother, isn't he? Fourth brother apologized to you. Gu Yanheng, who was relatively young and had just read for a few years, immediately bowed and replied, Fourth brother, it's all seventh brothers, isn't it? Seventh brother apologized to fourth brother. The two of them looked at each other with a smile, and at this moment they had a somewhat literary aura. A few people were talking, and Lao Lu Gu Yen hurriedly ran in outside and lifted the door curtain. Mother, fourth brother, fifth sister, and seventh brother. Dad asked me to call you guys for dinner. Mrs. Gu reached out to take Gu Tian and the others walked out of the room. Before eating, Gu Tian was embraced and kissed by everyone until her face was covered in saliva before being rescued by her mother. She pursed her lips and looked at her own mother with a crying expression. Mrs. Gu suddenly felt a bit overwhelmed with tears and laughter, and quickly comforted her. 
Mr. Gu looked at his daughter's small appearance and felt so heartbroken that he couldn't even drink alcohol. Don't kiss casually in the future. Except for me and your mother. Nestled in Mrs. Gu's arms, pretending to be aggrieved, Gu Tian instantly forgot about her grievances. Her mind was full of this, okay. Is this okay? After all, I got my father's promise, and no one dared to go against Mr. Gu's words. After dinner, Mr. Gu sat on the Kong, holding Gu Tian in his arms and looking up at Gu Xufeng, saying, Boss, tomorrow is your sister's full moon wine. At dawn, go to the neighbors and borrow some tables, chairs, and benches. Borrow as much as you can. Boss Gu Xufeng nodded and agreed. Mr. Gu instructed the fourth son Gu Yunqi and the seventh son Gu Yanheng to go to the village entrance to pick up people. The two daughter Dot and Dot Law and the fifth son Gu Jing were helping in the kitchen, while the sixth son Gu Yan was looking at a group of nephews and nieces to prevent them from causing trouble. After everything is arranged properly, let everyone rest earlier. Boss Gu Xufeng took his wife back to the room. He sat on the bed and looked at his wife, saying, Shwer, you've been working hard these days. Since Mrs. Gu became pregnant, the burden of managing household chores has fallen on her eldest daughter. In. La Qin Shui. Qin Shui shook her head and said, It's all right. The Gu family has a good family tradition and doesn't have those dirty matters. Over the years, her in laws have been extremely kind to her, and now it's also right to take care of her in laws. After talking for a while, the couple went to bed separately. The next day, with a slight light, the Gu family got up. The pots and pans were used to wash vegetables. After the two daughter dot in dot law had prepared the necessary things, Mrs. Gu went to take the spoons. Although the banquet is only held at noon, because today's dishes are mostly meat and still game, the game meat is not easy to cook, so it needs to be cooked for a while. End of this chapter Chapter 6 Booking a Baby Parent You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Booking a Baby Parent Boss Gu Xufeng went to the neighborhood early in the morning to borrow tables and chairs, and piece together ten tables. The married woman Gu Ying brought her husband's family early in the morning, and when Mr. Gu saw that his in-laws were also here, he quickly entertained them. Gu Yingfu's family name is Ching Dan, a honest and honest person who has three sons and two daughters. Originally, Gu Ying wanted to bring her child back to her mother's house to live for a few days, but Ching Dan felt it was not appropriate and put the child in the neighbor's house. Gu Ying and Ching Dan looked at the busy crowd and immediately rolled up their sleeves to help with the fight. After a busy morning, the Gu family's small courtyard was soon filled with people, all of whom were the same group of people who helped catch the game that day. They all brought their families, but not many came, and only a few people came from each house. Thank you, brothers, for coming to drink Gu Tian's full moon wine from my house. After everyone sat down, Mr. Gu stood up, picked up his glass, and thanked everyone. Today, those who come to drink are those who have a good relationship with Mr. Gu on weekdays, and there have been notices, but no one has come. He always hoped that his little girl's full moon banquet would be lively, but it didn't go according to people's wishes. He naturally knew the reason, and it didn't matter to him. Old Gu, you're so polite. This is the first time in all these years that I've known you so politely. It's still because of his daughter. To sum up, they have benefited from the blessings of the young daughter of the Gu family. Mr. Gu waved his hand, saying that it was too official them to say. After thanking him again immediately, he continued drinking while holding on to the slippery old man. After three rounds of drinking, Mrs. Gu carried the little girl out to show her face according to customs. When everyone saw this little appearance, they immediately woke up for most of the time. Every year, dolls are born in the village, but the dolls in the full moon are either thin or dark. However, the first time they see such a white and tender female doll, everyone's mind immediately becomes lively. At first glance, the slippery old man fell in love with this little doll and quickly walked up to Mr. Gu. He lowered his head and whispered a few words, Brother Gu, do you want to get married to a doll? 
Lao Shidu has a one-year-old grandson, who is from his youngest son Fulai's family. He originally wanted to marry his in-laws, but when asked, he immediately regretted it. Gu's fourth and seventh parents are educated, and fourth is about to leave this year. He may even become a scholar, so the future will naturally be a rising tide, which is something that these people don't care about. What's that? Brother Gu, you just think I've drunk too much, and I've thought about it. My family doesn't even deserve this little doll. The old slippery guy's last sentence was sincere, and the more he looked at it, the more he liked it. How could his grandson be worthy of it? And this is still the daughter of Lao Gu, isn't it a generational difference? No, no, no. Mr. Gu's face suddenly became gloomy and terrifying when he heard the old slippery man's words, but unfortunately, the old slippery man who was thinking down did not see it. Before he could throw the slippery old man out, the servant opened his mouth again and his expression softened for a moment. Little brother, my daughter is not limited to this land. So far, his daughter is not limited to this rural area. Mr. Gu thought for a moment and felt that he needed to write a letter to them. The old slick nodded in agreement, then chatted a few more words before continuing to sit down and drink. The people who were close listened to the conversation between the two of them all, and they all took a break from their thoughts. They looked at Mr. and Mrs. Gu with envy, praising them for their great fortune. Gu Tian, who had just woken up, was a bit confused, but in her ears came waves of compliments, praising her parents. She immediately smiled happily. A lively full moon banquet was held, and all the people in the village ate their fill. There were also a few who didn't make any progress, even bringing their own pots in order to eat more meat. Mr. Gu looked in his eyes, turned his head and instructed him, then quickly went to see the little girl. The Gu family has excellent social connections. After dinner, there were several well-known families who offered to stay and help, but Mrs. Gu didn't refuse much. After all, she had also helped others before, and she didn't mind it. Fortunately, there were still some wild animals left in the kitchen, so the whole family could share some, which was enough to improve the food for the next few days. It's getting late, and the Gu family, who have been busy all day, finally have time to rest. When Mr. Gu entered the house, Mrs. Gu had just finished breastfeeding when she saw Mr. Gu's furrowed brow and couldn't help but ask. What made you frown? Since having a little girl, she has never seen Mr. Gu frown, but today, isn't it because of the slippery old man's words? The slippery old man said about getting married to a child. Didn't he change his tune after being so slippery? Mrs. Gu thought for a moment. Later, the old slick changed his mouth, but at that time, Mr. Gu's face changed, and she could see it clearly. Mr. Gu let out a sigh. His words were not just for the old bones, but also for those with thoughts. After Mrs. Gu comforted Tian Bao to sleep, she looked up at him and said in a warm voice, What they say is their business. Besides, you can control what people say in front of you. Can you control what people say in front of you? Tian Bao is still young, and the road ahead will be long. If you get a bad reputation because of this, you can be careful about yourself. Mrs. Gu nodded and stopped, speaking in the gentlest voice and the harshest words. Mr. Gu shuddered, swallowed a mouthful of water, and immediately went to the kitchen to fetch a basin of foot wash, personally washing his wife's feet. Mrs. Gu readily accepted it. The sky is covered in darkness, occasionally dotted with a few stars, creating a bit of mystery for the silent night. A white dove swept across the sky and disappeared. Asterisk Jingzhong the white dove landed inside a quaint and majestic building, and was seen by a servant who was watching outside. He quickly grabbed the white dove and hurried towards the study. There are guards on duty outside the study, and when someone enters, they block them one after another. Even a mosquito cannot get close to the study. The study was originally quite spacious, but now it is filled with people, making the space somewhat cramped. An elderly man with frosty white hair sat in the main seat, holding a letter about two fingers wide in his hand. On it, he only briefly said a few words, 
but it made everyone appear a bit low. After a while, the note was thrown onto the table with a hint of air. However, the note was light and floating, even with force, it didn't go far. It floated back to the old man's hand, and the angry old man picked up the note again to throw it away, only to be snatched away by a man in grey standing beside him. Dad, calm down and I'll handle it. The old man was displeased and angry, turning his head aside, unwilling to even glance. The man in grey then lowered his head to look at the contents of the note, with only a few words in his mouth. I am deeply gratified to have another delicate daughter. Thanks to my ancestors, I am extremely grateful. Thank you, M. O. Hong. Meaning. I have another precious daughter, and I am very pleased. Thank you very much for taking care of my ancestors. Thank you very much, don't be jealous. The man in grey clothes was quite headache-ridden. Seeing how angry the old man was, they couldn't help it. In his generation, he didn't have a single girl, and even the next generation would have grandchildren. Now that the old man sees his grandson, he feels headache-ridden, but the third man will poke his heart out. When he comes back, he will use this matter to poke the old man's heart out. This has given birth to another daughter, and he must be envious of the old man. I'll go find this turtle grandson now. The old man had a bad temper and was very angry with Lao San. He immediately had to pack his things and leave. The whole room was frightened and comforted repeatedly, until it took half a day for everyone to recover. They dared not mention it in front of the old man, so they could only secretly prepare gifts to send to the third person. End of this chapter Chapter 7 Eating Carrots You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 Eating Carrot Spring is coming from the east, and in a blink of an eye, three years have passed. At this point, Gu Tian had already grown up into a happy little bun. While someone else's three-year-old child was still piling mud at the doorstep, Gu's three-year-old child secretly carried his family up the mountain early on. Shutu village is backed by a large mountain, where there are various wild animals and rare medicinal herbs. Gu Tian is familiar with various medicinal herbs. Since she unintentionally awakened to space a year ago, she has added a red round mark between her right ring finger and little finger. Everything in the space, like other travelers, is like a pool of spiritual spring. A room is filled with various medicinal herbs, both prepared and unprocessed. Outside, the ground is planted with various rare medicinal herbs, and there are also areas for growing crops. Just because she is too young, she can't do many things and can only do some simple things. Gu Tian climbed the mountain with short legs and struggled. In the past, she used to wander at the foot of the mountain, but now she feels that the time is ripe and the ginseng in the space can be sold. In recent years, I have been in the Gu family, but the family is still in poverty. My elder brother works as a clerk in the Yaman, and now he has been promoted to the position of shop head. My second brother has not heard from me yet, and my third sister's two sons have already been enlightened last year. Three years ago, fourth brother passed the imperial examination and became a scholar. Originally, father wanted fourth brother to continue the exam with determination, but master suggested that fourth brother go to the government school to study and prepare for this year's spring festival. Wu Jia is also somewhat famous in the county now. She has a pair of skillful hand-embroidered things that come to life. She also got married a year ago and only waited for her fourth brother to marry after high school. Sister Lu is now 15 years old and not interested in anything, except for cooking, which has been widely circulated by Mrs. Gu. In addition, Gu Tian occasionally brings back some seasonings from the mountains. Chiga is also preparing for the next exam this year. Gu Tian sighed deeply at the thought of this. If fourth brother is successful, he will definitely enter the capital. If seventh brother is successful, Tong Sheng will also have to take the exam, and all these expenses require silver. She clenched her small fist tightly and continued to dig for various medicinal herbs in the mountain, carrying a small backpack specially made by Mr. Gu for Gu Tian. 
Inside was a century-old ginseng that she had taken out of space. At this time, the Gu family. Mr. Gu went to his beloved girl's room early in the morning to wake up, but after knocking on the door for a long time, there was no movement. In the past, when he knocked on the door, the little people inside quickly came to open it. Why hasn't there been any movement today? Could it be? Mr. Gu suddenly remembered the scene a few days ago when Tian Bao pestered him and asked him to weave a cage. He quickly pushed the door open, but it was not bolted. As soon as he pushed it open, it was clean and tidy inside, and the small quilts on the bed were neatly folded, but the person was not inside. Little one, little two. Among the grandchildren, there are only little one, little two, little three, and little four who are relatively older. These children take their sister dot in dot law to play all day long. The first child belongs to the eldest family, and the second child belongs to the second family. The two children heard their grandfather calling them and hurriedly ran over, followed by a group of young children. What's wrong with grandpa? Mr. Gu didn't speak and first scanned everyone, only to find that there was no Tian Bao inside. His eyebrows furrowed tightly. Have you seen your sister dot in dot law? The eldest is in the county government office, while the fourth and seventh are studying outside. There are only a few grandchildren at home. The children shook their heads together and said, No, there isn't. Mr. Gu's eyebrows furrowed even deeper, and he patted his legs, thinking that it was broken. Hurriedly ran into the hall again, and the child behind him didn't know what had happened. The older child guessed and quickly followed his grandfather into the room. Mrs. Gu in the room is still laying out bowls and chopsticks, and the meal will be ready soon. Mr. Gu ran into the house, took the chopsticks from Mrs. Gu's hand, placed them on the table, and turned his head to Mrs. Gu, saying, When did Tian Bao leave? Did you see it? Isn't Tian Bao inside? Mrs. Gu casually replied, suddenly realizing something was wrong. Tian Bao isn't inside. There's no one in the room, the little blankets are all neatly folded. Hurry up and find someone. Upon hearing this, Mrs. Gu immediately shouted for everyone to search for someone together. Mr. Gu also went to find several old men to help search in the village, while he himself went into the mountain alone to find someone. On the other side, Sweet Treasure walked with her short legs in the mountains. The small basket on her back was filled with a huge ginseng. She had originally planned to take out a century-old one, but she found that treasures were everywhere in the mountain. She casually discovered a pile of ginseng nests, one of which was in her backpack, and the rest was transplanted into the space by her. Just finishing all of this was exhausting. She is very curious now whether this mountain belongs or not. If not never mind, even if she doesn't have it, she can't afford a mountain with her current abilities. It's better to think about how to make money. Tian Bao was still holding an injured little fox in his arms. He was tired after walking halfway, so he sat on a dry wooden stake with the fox in his arms. Looking around, he realized that he had been walking so far with his head covered. After resting for a while, he hugged the young fox and searched for the way down the mountain, but did not notice a stone at his feet. When he tripped and fell to the ground, he still tightly protected the young fox in his arms. Tian Bao let out a deep sigh, her arms and legs sore. She lifted the young fox's buttocks and quickly got up, looking down at the culprit who tripped her. A big rock. That big stone was half the size of her head, with a dull and dull gray surface that looked a bit rough and sandy to the touch. Chen Bao's eyes flickered slightly, and before she could take a closer look, she heard a distant cry. Sweetheart. Where are you, sweetheart? Dad. I'm here. Upon hearing the sound, Tian Bao immediately responded and lowered her head to look at the big stone at her feet. She quickly squatted down and moved the stone into the space. After finishing all of this, Mr. Gu also searched for the sound to come over. Mr. Gu's eyes turned red as he walked deeper and deeper into the mountain. His heart also grew colder as he walked. Along the way, 
he begged his grandfather and grandmother to pray for the safety of Tian Bao. Now that the person was in front of him, he couldn't help but feel a bit like crying. God knows how scared he was. Dad. Tian Bao saw her father walk over with red eyes, and she quickly ran towards him with a little fox in her arms. She ran up to her, afraid of crushing the little fox, so she had to extend a hand to embrace her father's thigh. Dad, you're here. She lifted her wet big eyes and looked at Mr. Gu, his hair scattered and disheveled, his body dirty, and his face covered in mud, as if he was rolling in the mud. Mr. Gu felt very distressed and self-blaming. Dad. Eat carrots. Tian Bao leaned sideways and leaned the small basket towards his father. Mr. Gu coaxed his eyes and followed suit, then froze in place and couldn't say a word for a long time. End of this chapter. Chapter 8. Selling Ginseng. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 8 Selling Ginseng Mr. Gu didn't regain his composure for a while, so he shook his father's thigh with sweet treasure. It was only then that Mr. Gu woke up from a dream. This. Tian Bao, this is what you dug. The three-dot-year-dot-old baby unexpectedly dug up ginseng. Tian Bao looked at his father and nodded seriously. This is really what she dug up. Dad, let's go home and eat carrots. Tian Bao's backpack was placed on the ground, and Mr. Gu picked it up. He also noticed the little fox in Tian Bao's arms. In the face of tremendous joy, he quickly calmed down and placed the backpack in his daughter's arms. He also let the little fox sit at the mouth of the backpack, which could block the ginseng inside. Okay. Let's go home and have some radish. Mr. Gu didn't correct the radish in Tian Bao's mouth. In order not to let others know more, let's just eat the radish. Mr. Gu quickly carried his daughter down the mountain, and the people he helped search for only wandered around the village. Despite searching all over the village, he couldn't find Tian Bao's figure. After much trouble, the whole village knew that Mr. Gu's daughter had been lost. Some people who didn't deal with the Gu family followed and watched the excitement. Seeing that this large group of people had gained nothing, they began to gloat. Let me tell you, this old Gu family has done too much evil. A good second in command, he said he went out to do business, but it never returned. Now that this little eight has gone missing again, this is God's revenge. Who said it's not? Our village is so remote, even children can get lost. How careless parents are. It's just retribution. Who doesn't have a girl movie in their family? There are still several in their family, and they just caught a really painful one. Even the heavens can't bear to watch it. What are you guys talking about all day? Just keep your mouth shut when you're free. With a roar, a group of gossiping women were stopped. The speaker was Li Zheng from the village, surnamed Wang, who was very fair in his dealings with others. A few women saw that the person coming was Wang Li Zheng Ho, and they all remained silent. Wang Lijing's face was gloomy. He remembered the words of those women just now, and he was also worried that the youngest daughter of the Lao Gu family would be lost. After all, he was the only person who knew the details of the Lao Gu family. Wang Li was walking up to the slippery old man when the person searching for him in the village suggested going to the mountain to take a look after finding no results. Can a slightly older child climb up the mountain on their own? But they were not sure either, so they could only go up the mountain to look for it, and by the way, they also found a few young and strong people to look outside along the village entrance. Wang Li was in front, and after giving a warning to everyone, he allowed them to go up the mountain. Just a few steps away, the slippery old man walking ahead saw a figure coming down the mountain, holding a childish child in his arms. Upon closer inspection, it turned out to be Mr. Gu holding the lost little girl. Look. It's Lao Gu who's here. He's still carrying Tian Bao. After Lao Gui Tu shouted loudly, everyone's eyes converged on the person who came down from the mountain, holding a childish child in his arms. It was Lao Gu Tu and Tian Bao. 
Mrs. Gu also noticed the commotion and quickly walked forward. She only realized that Tian Bao was dirty, with messy hair and the ribbons on her head that had been thrown away, leaving her in an indescribable state of embarrassment. Mrs. Gu shed tears of heartache and was afraid that others would see her, so she secretly wiped away her tears and muttered, Just come back. Thank you all today. Tomorrow, I will prepare some thin wine at home. I hope you all appreciate it. After speaking, he carried the child and left. Along the way, Tian Bao remained silent, lowered his head and didn't know what he was thinking. It wasn't until he got home and saw off the people he cared about that the family finally got together. The two daughter dot in dot law looked at their sister dot in dot law, their eyes turning red with heartache. They opened their mouths but couldn't say a word. Neither father nor mother spoke, so they, as daughter dot in dot law, naturally dared not speak first. Several grandchildren looked at their little aunt with big eyes, and seeing her bowing her head, they all felt heartbroken. Grandpa, don't be cruel to your aunt. If you're cruel, then be cruel to me. The speaker was Xiao Wu from the boss's family, about five or six years old, who had already begun to look good at a young age. Mr. Gu remained silent for a moment, then lowered his head to look at his little daughter in his arms. Coincidentally, Tian Bao also turned his head to look at his father, with a damp mist in his eyes and a soft feeling in his heart. You take your younger siblings out to play, I won't punish your aunt. He couldn't bear to punish him either. After receiving a positive answer from the old man, the young couple cheered and ran out to play together. The door was closed again. There are only Mr. Gu, Mrs. Gu, and two daughters-in-law, one big and one small, inside the house. Mr. Gu took out the small backpack held in Tian Bao's arms and placed it on the small Kong table. The little fox in the backpack quickly crawled into Tian Bao's arms to avoid the danger of being thrown down. A few people's gaze was diverted by the things in the small basket. There is actually a huge ginseng in the small basket. A few people were so surprised that they couldn't speak. Where did the big ginseng come from? And it's still so big. In earlier years, Mr. Gu also dug out ginseng, but his size was much smaller than the big ginseng in front of him. This is the ginseng that Tian Bao dug up. Mr. Gu saw the shock in their eyes and calmly said something even more shocking. Looking at the stunned expressions of the people in front of him, his mood suddenly improved a lot. Dad. Auntie really has skills. The eldest daughter dot in dot law was stunned for a moment and looked at Auntie who was caressing the little fox in confusion. Tian Bao noticed everyone's gaze and raised his face slightly, with a hint of seriousness on his face. Selling carrots. Let Xiaoyi and the others read. Although Tian Bao looks like a three dot year dot old child, Xinzi is actually an adult. In ancient times, rural people were collectively referred to as mud legs and merchants at that time were also looked down upon. Only reading was the only way out for men. On the way, she thought a lot and first enlightened a few eligible nephews. If they were short of money, they would sell ginseng. There were many ginseng and lingji that she found in the space, as well as several rare medicinal herbs that she transplanted into the space. With these things, even if they don't go up the mountain for a few years, they will be enough to cover the expenses of this big family. Mr. Gu's eyes turned red again. The young girl was the youngest, but, from the eldest and second families, you have also heard that your sister dot in dot law entered the mountain to enlighten the first and second children. She is just a three dot year dot old child, but she always thinks of her nephews. I hope you must show filial piety to your sister dot in dot law, so that the first and second children can also be filial to your sister dot in dot law. After listening, the two daughter dot in dot law's faces were filled with tears, especially the second wife who was saddened. Dad, don't worry. Even if there's only one bite, we'll let our sister dot in dot law eat it. The two daughter dot in dot law expressed their feelings, and Mr. Gu nodded, thinking that he would turn around and focus on hitting his son and grandchildren. End of this chapter. Chapter 9 Entering the County Town 
You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 9 Entering the county town Tianbao saw his two sister dot in dot law so sad, and suddenly felt that the burden on his shoulders was heavy again, after all, there were still many nephews to support his studies. She is too young now to disclose many thoughts, but she feels uncomfortable holding them back. Tianbao struggled out of the old man's arms, placed the little fox on the Kong, twisted his body, and ran towards the two sister dot in dot law. Fortunately, both of them leaned against the Kong and arrived within a few steps. Don't cry, sell carrots, go to school, I can afford to raise them. I used my strength to express my determination to raise them. The two sister dot in dot law's eyes turned even redder, silently wiping away their tears, remembering their sister dot in dot law's kindness in their hearts. Even if they didn't take care of her, they were satisfied with this sentence. Tianbao's intelligence exceeded the expectations of Mr. Gu and Mrs. Gu. Mr. Gu decided to sell the carrots in the county early the day after tomorrow and arrange for the young couple to enter a private school as soon as possible. Shutu village is located in a wide area, but it is too remote and adjacent to several mountains. The largest mountain is the one behind their village. The village is poor and cannot afford private schools. The children in the village have never been educated, and a few households who study have also moved out of Shirtu village. The only feasible way for the first and second students to attend a private school is to go to the county town. After finalizing, the family quickly boiled water and cooked, and their sister dot in dot law was still dirty like a clay figurine. After three rounds of eating, Tian Bao was extremely tired. He wrapped his small hand around Mrs. Gu's neck and fell asleep in a daze. Mr. Gu had something to talk to Mrs. Gu, so he walked up to her and reached out to take the sleeping sweet treasure, placing it on the Kong bed. I had thought about mentioning to the boss a few days ago, asking the freshman to go to a private school to study, but I didn't expect. My three dot year dot old daughter actually went up the mountain to pick ginseng. He never thought of this, and now whenever he thinks of it, he feels a wave of fear. Upon hearing this, Mrs. Gu frowned and gave Mr. Gu a stern glare with a disapproving gaze in her eyes. Mr. Gu was a bit confused and didn't know what he had said wrong again. How do you mean to say that? If it weren't for your suggestion of frugality, would our family have reached this point? She gets angry whenever she thinks of this. Mrs. Gu was originally a young lady from an official family. She has been living a luxurious life since childhood. Although she is not very wealthy, she has never lacked anything at all. She married Mr. Gu with no intention of wealth or status. She had initially set her sights on him with that carefree spirit, but now. Only with anger. Which wealthy person is not a group of slaves? But what about them? He also has a lot of money, but lives in mud houses and grass houses, even earning the nickname Exercising Children to Learn Diligence, Thrift, and Thrift. If it weren't for this family, the second person wouldn't have gone out to do business without saying a word. Until now, there has been no news, and every time she thinks about it, she feels extremely guilty. If I had told my second son about the family situation earlier, wouldn't the whole family be neat now? Mr. Gu, aware of his wrongdoing, remained silent and sat on the edge of the Kong bed. He knows what Mrs. Gu is talking about, but he also has words of suffering. I didn't think. I know you didn't think about it, but do you plan to spend your whole life like this? Just because of fighting with others, would you rather live a poor life? You're really not even as good as sweet baby. Mrs. Gu has a hint of hatred towards iron and steel. She wouldn't have said anything about Mr. Gu's absurdity in earlier years. If it weren't for today's Tianbao incident, she felt like she would have held it back for a lifetime. Let's not talk about the eldest, second, and third for now. We'll talk about them when the second comes back in the future. The fourth and seventh will come to an end soon, and there's nothing to worry about. The fifth is engaged, and the sixth is not young anymore. There are also a group of young boys who need to be considered. I've thought about it, and my family's money should also be overshadowed. 
In the future, I plan to use the name of Sweet Treasure to make our family better and better. She only hopes that in a hundred years, these older brothers and sisters can take care of Tian Bao more. Mr. Gu remained speechless and only murmured yes, then remained silent. After all, the last thing Mrs. Gu said was exactly what he wanted to say. After Mrs. Gu gave some more advice, she finally let Mr. Gu go. In the blink of an eye, the day of entering the county town arrived. Tian Bao got up early in the morning, folded the small blankets on the bed, and then shifted his gaze to Mr. Gu. A pair of wet big eyes, staring at Mr. Gu all the time, with a longing in their eyes and a slightly pursed mouth, as if protesting why they didn't take her. Mr. Gu ignored Tian Bao's gaze and felt like he had been busy all morning. As he was about to leave with a small basket, he suddenly remembered something he had forgotten. Tap your forehead. He forgot about his daughter. Mr. Gu hurriedly ran into Tian Bao's room and happened to see him turn around, pouting his butt at him. Mr. Gu was so anxious that he was sweating profusely. He was determined to coax his daughter, but also worried that the ox cart at the village entrance might leave. So he picked up the sweet treasure and caught it in his arm, running away in front of Mrs. Gu's sharp eyes. Dad! Slow down, don't hurt your sister. In. Law. The eldest daughter. In. Law's heart melted when she saw her sister. In. Law's aggrieved little gaze. My sister. In. Law is so cute. Mr. Gu rushed slowly and finally managed to stop the ox cart just as it was about to leave. Along the way, the villagers of Shirtu village were all surprised, only to see a handsome old man apologizing to a three. year. old girl one after another, and one after another, they dared not do it again. After entering the county town, Tian Bao's injured heart was finally soothed. After calming down, she looked down on her childish appearance, but deep down, there was a hint of sweetness emanating from her heart, which she had never enjoyed before. God has promised her a lifetime, and she can do whatever she wants without any worries. Mr. Gu carried sweet treasure to a small clinic in the town. There was only one sitting doctor, a long counter, and a row of traditional Chinese medicine cabinets standing behind. There was also a servant busy with taking medicine. Brother Li. Mr. Gu walked in and greeted the sitting doctor with a slight nod. Dr. Li looked quite old, with a few strands of white hair mixed in between his black hair and a few wrinkles around his eyes, but he didn't have a beard. Upon hearing the familiar voice, Dr. Lee quickly stood up and looked at the person approaching. His gaze shifted to the little person he was holding in his arms, with a hint of surprise in his eyes. Brother Gu, this is the little ball that my younger siblings gave birth to. The tone was very affirmative, and he diagnosed the child. Tian Bao, this is Uncle Lee, called Uncle. Mr. Gu pointed at Dr. Lee and said to Tian Bao in his arms. Tian Bao straightened up and bowed slightly to Dr. Li, with a slightly silly smile on his face. He said in a milky voice, Hello Uncle Li. End of this chapter. Chapter 10. Defamation. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 10 Defamation The milky words filled Dr. Li's heart with joy. This child deserves to be diagnosed by him, he doesn't recognize anyone. After chatting with Dr. Lee for a while, Mr. Gu explained the purpose of his trip. In the past, the ginseng that Mr. Gu dug up was also sold by Dr. Lee, so Dr. Lee subconsciously thought it was still the ginseng that had been around for decades. However, when Mr. Gu took out the ginseng, he was stunned and remained motionless for a long time. This, this, this. This ginseng is really big. This is the second time he has seen such a big ginseng. Mr. Gu nodded with a smile on his face, not feeling anything strange about the ginseng in front of him. On the contrary, little Tian Bao in his arms looked at Dr. Li's expression and then at his father's confident expression, and covered his mouth with a smirk. Because she remembered that her father had seen that ginseng for the first time. Mr. Gu heard laughter and glanced at the little girl. He saw a coquettish smirk on his face, covering his mouth. He thought she was also laughing at Dr. Lee, but little did he know she was laughing at him. 
Dr. Lee quickly regained consciousness and pulled Mr. Gu to stand beside him. Brother Gu, show me this ginseng. Hey! Take it lightly, you need more. Dr. Lee carefully took the ginseng and weighed it carefully in his hand. The heavy weight of ginseng was much larger than what he had seen for the first time. With so many whiskers, it could take about 400 years, possibly nearly 500 years. Dr. Lee was extremely excited in his heart. A few days ago, a nobleman came to search for ginseng that has been around for 300 to 400 years. How could he encounter such a small place like him? But who knew they met today? It's really dozing off and giving a pillow. Brother Gu, if you make a price, I won't say anything. Brother Lee, look at the bidding. I'm completely clueless about these things. If you want me to make a bid, that's really pushing me up. Mr. Gu waved his hand and resisted the offer. What if the price drops? This was dug by my daughter. Dr. Lee gritted his teeth and whispered a monkey spirit. I'll give you 3,000 tails of ginseng. Dr. Lee offered a high price of 3,000 tails, which is the highest in their county town. But compared to Beijing, it is the lowest. After all, ginseng, which has been around for 400 years, cannot be encountered or sought after. Tian Bao doesn't have a deep understanding of money yet, but she also thinks that 3,000 tails is a lot, especially since there are many rare herbs in her space. In her past life, she liked to tinker with some secret skincare methods and often used them herself. Now, in the resource-rich ancient times, she can continue to do some, not only for her own use, but also to earn money to support her family. The more Tian Bao thought about it, the more he felt it was possible. He clenched his small hands into small fists, with a hint of determination in his eyes. Mr. Gu turned his head to see what his daughter meant, but he saw Tian Bao clenching his fists. Little fist. Fist. That means the price is not good, he understands. Mr. Gu shook his head at Dr. Lee, his eyes narrowed slightly, and his voice became somewhat indifferent. Three years ago, there was a 200-year-old ginseng in the capital. Someone offered 30,000 tails of silver, but it couldn't be bought. In the end, it was sold at the Wanbao Pavilion for 100,000 tails of silver, which has been widely circulated to this day. Brotherly, can I sell this 400-year-old ginseng for 200,000 tails? It could be even more. After all, it has been common for over a hundred years, while his 400-year-old ginseng is not. Mr. Gu casually wrote these words in a questioning tone, as if he was really at home. But Dr. Li knew that this person was wilting. How do you know about what happened in Beijing three years ago? He suddenly remembered that Brother Gu was from the countryside, and he might not even know where the capital city gate was going. How could he know about the event that moved the capital three years ago? Everyone knows. Mr. Gu said this in his presence. Dr. Li knew very well that there was nothing he could ask from Mr. Gu's mouth, so he turned his head and murmured, I just asked you not to bid. The tone is somewhat melancholic. Mr. Gu raised his eyebrows with a hint of helplessness on his face. Dr. Li negotiated with Mr. Gu. I originally planned to make a deal for 50,000 tails, but due to Dr. Li's relentless price reduction, Mr. Gu's eyes turned cold and he immediately offered 60,000 tails of silver, whether he wanted it or not. If you don't want him, go to the Wanbao Pavilion. Dr. Li wanted to cry without tears, but at an old age, he was tricked by an old man, and most of his coffin was gone. He thinks he is a bargaining expert, but he is not worth mentioning in front of Mr. Gu. He is a bit puzzled now, why is his ability still getting worse and worse? But this question has an answer in the future, and I have also risen to the heights. Tian Bao was once again shocked and froze in place. She thought 3,000 tails would be enough, but she didn't expect her father to be particularly powerful, able to sell for 60,000 tails. Is this just a small ginseng worth 60,000 tails? So she still has a millennium ginseng in her space, isn't it? She is really rich. 
Qian Bao's bright eyes kept staring at his own father, whispering in his ear. Dad, you're amazing. Master Gu's sense of vanity instantly exploded. His daughter praised him and he felt that his strength was not stable enough. He wanted to exert more strength, but seeing Dr. Li's tearless expression, he decided to temporarily let Dr. Li go and wait for more wool before harvesting. Dr. Li didn't know what Mr. Gu was thinking, nor did he know that he had become a wool waiting to be harvested. He was afraid that Mr. Gu would change his mind again, so he quickly took a jade plaque and led Mr. Gu to the largest bank in the county, named Jinyu Bank. Dr. Li, relying on his jade plaque, took 60,000 tails of silver notes and handed them over to Mr. Gu, and the two of them were able to settle their debts. Mr. Gu held these 60,000 tails of silver bills and thought for a while before opening a household under the name of Gu Tian. He stored the remaining 55,000 tails in it, exchanged 100 tails of the remaining 5,000 tails for broken silver, and the rest were still silver bills. Tian Bao has once again felt the feeling of being a wealthy woman. With money, Mr. Gu went on a crazy shopping spree with a sweet treasure in his arms. A pretty headdress. Buy. Beautiful little clothes. Buy. Buy ten sets. Buy all kinds of dim sum. The two of them kept buying and selling, with their little hands pointing towards each other, but before they could walk much, they were stopped by a group of poor and evil people. Isn't it because you bought it too crazily and made eyes? Tian Bao secretly thought to himself, where exactly did he become rich? The person in charge is the man in front of us who snatched our child. Look. Our little girl is still in his arms. Little girl. Tian Bao was a bit puzzled. She turned her head and looked around, only her father holding her stood here alone, surrounded by a group of people. Suddenly, a chubby woman jumped out and pointed at her, saying it was a little girl. She is the sweet treasure of her parents. Dad, have we been robbed? Why didn't the other party say that I opened this road and planted this tree? Mr. Gu tightly hugged Tian Bao and didn't pay any attention to the few minions in front of him. End of this chapter